Hi, I'm Ryan Dalglish, the teaching pastor here at the 456. Thanks for joining us this week for our community gathering video. We have finished up our series on uh, God the King, and we finished up with one that I particularly enjoyed, really enjoy talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. So our, our sermon this past week was the eternal kingdom. And it's, it's really interesting, when Jesus uh, came to earth and he was uh, <coughs> among the Pharisees, among the disciples, among the Jewish people, he would say to them on more than one occasion, the kingdom of heaven is here, the kingdom of heaven is in your midst. And, uh, and it, it seems to be a reference to himself. It seems that there is this tie between what we call the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and Jesus himself. And it's, it's just really an interesting, fascinating thing to talk about. Maybe that's something that you guys can talk about a little bit now in your community gathering. But uh, I, I just, I, I love, because you know, as I was, anyway, let me get to this point. Our theology this past week was the kingdom of God is coming. And the reason that I point this out is I, I went back and forth on saying the kingdom of God is here, uh, for our theology, the kingdom of God is coming. I even thought at one point about doing the kingdom of God is here slash coming. Uh, and I just thought well, it's just too messy. But now we can talk about it. Now we can discuss it a little bit. The reason that I chose the kingdom of God is coming is because it does seem to be tied directly to Jesus, the person of Jesus. And when Jesus is talking to the, the Pharisees and he's talking to the Jews and he says the kingdom of God is here, it's a reference to himself. He is beckoning them to believe in him as God, as Savior. And, we, you know, we looked a little bit at Daniel 7 the other day and talked a little bit about Revelation chapter 5 and how that this kingdom is being given over to Jesus, that the kingdom of God that is established, that is real, is going to be handed over to Jesus. And he is going to be uh, the king and the authority over all things. And so it is tied, it is connected to who Jesus is. And so from our perspective, right, from our perspective, the kingdom of God is coming. It is something that we are looking forward to. It is something that we are longing for. And, and it's uh, it, one of the references that I really like from 1 Peter chapter 1 says, to set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you the day Jesus Christ is revealed. Like there is this revelation of Jesus that is coming. There is a day that the kingdom of God will be established. I also think about in Colossians chapter 3 where it says to set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And it says when Christ who is your life appears, I think this is verse 4 of Colossians 3, when Christ who is your life appears, you will appear with him. Like we're, we're joined with him. And there is something exciting and exhilarating about the day that Christ breaks through the sky, that the trump sounds, the voice of the archangel, and the kingdom of God is established. And and uh, I don't know, I, I, I find it interesting, I find it exciting. I, I, of course, remember growing up and being taught stuff like from Revelation 7 that there's no more tears, uh, there's no more pain, those kinds of things are really significant. And when we think about heaven, maybe we think about that, or maybe we think about streets of gold, or we think of a crystal sea. And all of this language that, that may be literal, but probably is more trying to capture the magnitude and the beauty of the kingdom of heaven. One of the, my favorite parts from Revelation 21 is that in the kingdom of heaven, there's no need for sun or moon or stars anymore because the glory of God fills it, like the glory of God lights it up. So this is coming. There is coming a time, Isaiah 25 is a really great text for us to look at that talks about this. There is coming a time when God establishes his kingdom. There is coming a time when we receive glorified bodies. There is coming a time where tears and suffering are removed from us. There is coming a time when, according to Isaiah 25 and according to 1 Corinthians 15, when the shadow of death is removed, the veil of death that has, has been a kind of um, a reality for everything that's ever lived and breathed, that, that, that death is removed and that the kingdom of God is established and that we get to enjoy it forever. Uh, that, that is a reality. And, and I don't know, I, growing up, you know, like the picture that I had of it was sitting around on a cloud with your harp and my goodness, uh, you can imagine how that didn't really appeal to an eight-year-old me. It doesn't really appeal to a 45-year-old me. Like, think about it like this, that, that we are going to be in the presence of the living God. We are going to be enjoying God, delighting in God. So when we think about those things, like 
Think enjoyment, think delight, think pleasure. The Bible tells us that in the presence of God is joy everlasting, pleasures forever are in his right hand. And, and when we think about the kingdom of heaven, that's kind of what we need to start thinking about. So the kingdom of God is coming. It is our hope, it is our longing, all of our joy is set on it. Our application this past week was live with our hope set on the kingdom of God. Like we, we, we to some degree or another, most of us are pursuing what we perceive as joy and pleasure. Um, we are in the job we are in because it's more, maybe you hate your job, but it's definitely more pleasing than not having enough money to pay the rent and not have food on the table, right? We, we are pursuing um, something that we think will make us happy. We're planning our vacation. We missed out, our family missed out on our, on our annual vacation this year because of COVID. And we're already looking forward to next summer and the, being able to get away together as a family. We're longing for that. But, but let our highest hope, let, our, let the thing that we are, we are really looking forward to be this kingdom of God that is coming that finally brings all things into harmony and all things into completion. So live with our hope set on the kingdom of God, not set on our physical health, not set on our 401ks, not worried so much about what's gonna happen in the election or the stock market or those kinds of things, but with our hope firmly set on the kingdom of heaven where there are pleasures forever, joy is eternal, uh, no more suffering, no more pain, no more tears, no penalty of death, sin has been eradicated and, and we get to enjoy God forever. And then our prayer this past week was, God, give us a view towards your kingdom. Give us a view, uh, maybe a different way to say this, that isn't so short-sighted that it terminates upon my death. Most of us, if we were honest with ourselves, most of us spend most of our time worried about things that won't matter once we're dead, right? We're worried about how to pay the bills. We're worried about um, uh, physical health. We're worried about what this person or that person thinks about us. We're worried about promotions. We're worried about layoffs. We're worried about if our car is gonna make it another year. We're, it, and from a practical standpoint, sure, those are things that we have to deal with, but what if, what if our gaze was fixed beyond that point? What if our gaze was fixed beyond the point of our death or beyond the point of Christ's return and our gaze was fixed towards the return of Jesus, towards the kingdom of God, where there is real joy, real life, abundant, you know? like. Uh, Revelation 22 talks about how the river of God flows through heaven and it produces the trees with the 12 fruits and the, the leaves of the, the trees are for the healings of the nation and the making whole of all people. And like, there is something that is eternal and rich and powerful about the kingdom of God. And it is what our hope is set on. So as you think about those things, here are three questions I want you to consider tonight. One, or today, this afternoon, this morning, whenever you're watching this. What is a dream or a longing you have for the future? A legitimate dream or longing you have for the future? I will tell you a couple of examples. One, I, I hope that on my 50th uh, year of life, so five years from now, I'm hoping to take the family. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Scotland. Dalglish is a Scottish name. I want to stay in a Scottish castle. Like, that's something that I am looking forward to. That's something that I would like to do with Michelle and the boys. Um, I have plans for trips or I have plans for investments or I have plans for my art business. So what are some dreams or longings that you have? Second, how does that dream or longing shape the choices you make today? And the reality of the matter is that if I want to go to Scotland in five years, I've got to start saving for that today. That's just where we are. Um, and saving for the next five years is still a stretch as to whether or not it'll happen. But that's how it's shaping my life today. I have this dream, I have this goal, and it is, it is shaping decisions that I'm making right now. And then the third question is this, uh, what about the kingdom of God gives you joy? What about the kingdom of God do you look forward to? Or what about the kingdom of God do you long for and why? For some of us, maybe the authentic true answer is I don't often think about the kingdom of God, but start thinking about it. Let it be right now. And, and what of the kingdom of God is it that you find joy in, that you long for and why? And so um, anyway, really enjoyed this month. Really enjoyed talking about God the King. Hope that you did too. Looking forward to starting a new series with you this Sunday. We love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.